Greetings, dear friends. I present your attention to the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado 120. The frame structure of the body is revered by many as the strongest and most reliable option, but in fact the frame is not at all something indestructible, and the body structure is not very successful. Too high floors, high center of gravity, poor body rigidity. And passive safety is not as good as it seems. In an accident with stationary objects or simply more significant, the consequences are the most severe. And only if it's a collision with a lighter car, frame and way will play a role. In operational terms, not everything is alright either. The anti-corrosion treatment of the frame of the TLS120 leaves much to be desired. Corrosion occurs from all welding points and holes on machines that were operated in Moscow and didn't undergo an additional anti-corrosion treatment, the frame can even be significantly weakened, up to the appearance of cracks. The unit is important, but it has to be changed due to unsuccessful off-road sorties. There are many cars with damaged license plates due to corrosion, but there are also enough cars with a dust, dark past. Toyota CUVs have long been the, leader, the leader in the number of thefts. Also, designers are not considered a crime. Previously, TLC were revered as an eternal machine and only for reliability. The VIN was applied to a plate which was attached to the body with rivets, which were processed on not only by official dealers, they could easily be bought at the spare parts store. This means that the old LC could always be exchanged for a new one, illegally imported in the cut. The plate could be riveted in any service. The method was especially convenient for those owners for whom the frame was unnumbered, the title of the vehicle was not number set. The main problem, oddly enough, is the ease of maintenance of this subsystem of the machine. In the most remote village, there is a guy who will deal with breakdowns without scanners and other things. One problem, along the way, it will often create a lot of problems due to its low qualifications. Three or four blocks of collective farm cleaning, five signaling devices, four sets of acoustics wiring. This all are the everyday services that restore the old Prado. People who drove them before didn't fool themselves. It rates and it is good. It shines so generally excellent. Unfortunately, Colcho's style is always somewhere close to Prado. You should be ready for this. Electrical problems also concern the suspension. If there are TEMs as adjustable shock absorbers, the wiring may fail and it is even repaired. The shock absorbers themselves are also repaired, but less often. They often install a non-original. The compressor also refers to the consumption on cars with a rear pneumatic, even with air intake from the passenger compartment. Its resource is very limited, usually it is enough for 150 to 100,000 km when driving on asphalt, and if the car drives on the ground, then the resource is lower every 5. Sometimes its sensors on the rear axle also fail. Bursting cylinders are clearly related to the problems of the suspension itself, but they are also inexpensive, about 8-9 thousand rubles. Few electronic problems arise in the engine compartment. Mainly, these are blooming of the connectors and sensors of gasoline engines. But the breakdown on the ignition lock, albeit not entirely electrical in fact, is very curious and moreover often occurs. The shaft bursts between the lock and the contact group of the lock. They are trying to repair it, bolt it with argon, seal it with a cold welding or simply change it. The parts are already on sale. If you meet the non-standard start button on the panel, you should know there is already someone collective farm with might and main. All these notes require increased attention. The suspension is very reliable unless you forget that it needs to be properly maintained. There are torn ball joints, the sudden blocks turn into the trash and burst springs. As you already understood from the last part of the article, you should not be particularly afraid of Numa. 30,000 rubles for a pump and 8,000 rubles for each of the airbags is not too much payment for an extra 4 cm of rear clearance and comfort. Moreover, the system serves with some care for a long time. If you do not allow dirty air into the compressor and take care of the cylinders, then hundreds of thousands can pass, especially if you do not abuse primers with the dust. TEMS shocks are expensive, but for such a tall and narrow vehicle, this is a good way to provide decent road handling while maintaining comfort. Again, well worth the investment. Often a more advanced version of the shock absorber with the TLC150 is installed. You just need to install a different support. It is difficult to say about the suspension resource in general. On good asphalt it is huge, but such cars are not bought for a smooth road at all. And often the suspension is enough for 6 months of good brakes on that asphalt. Moreover, a passenger car from such speeds and roads would have long ago fallen off the subframes. And all the things see, you just need to change the ball and rubber bands of the levers. On the weak points, wheel bearings can be distinguished. They are not particularly tight. 
After overcoming the forts, they often begin to wrestle. They find us penetrates through all the seals. And on good roads and in warm regions, the resource again is very large. The brakes are smoothly designed, easy to change pads and the fact that discs and pads are killed regularly. The car is heavy, the brakes are small, it's easy to draw a conclusion. Discs dry quite often due to their high temperature. It is very rare for the ABS unit to fail, but errors in the stabilization system are often associated with errors in the steering position sensor. They forget to set it to zero after the procedure for adjusting the camber and toe-in of the wheels. In general, everything is done very, very reliably, provided that the drive shafts are injected regularly. If they are injected, of course, grease is replaced in the axles and the condition of the CV joints and thirds is monitored. All these elements still require regular re replacement, but with timely maintenance, serious replacements can be avoided up to a mileage of 150 to 100,000 km. The transfer case doesn't, does its job well too. There are zero claims to automatic machines and mechanics. Automatic transmissions require only a timely oil change. Every 60,000 km will be optimal and accurate operation without overheating. Automatic machines here are mainly of the A750F series. They have five stages and can hardly be called particularly conservative. They even provide good dynamics and fuel consumption. The algorithms of work are very well tuned. The resource of the gas turbine engine is large, the contamination of the box is weak, the thermal modes are very gentle, and in general the box can travel 200 and 300,000 km. By the way, this automatic transmission can be found on Mitsubishi, Pajero, Suzuki, Vitara and Kia Sorando. Less often, automatic transmissions of the A340 341 is series coming across mainly with the 2.7 TRFE engine, but they also installed it with diesel engines and rare gasoline 3.0 engines. This first step also belongs to the category of eternal, perfectly thought out design, good maintenance schedule. Sometimes, even in inhuman conditions, it still works and works in the hundreds of thousands. And in the device, it is very simple and logical. The main engines in our market are Gasoline Force 2.7 series, 2TRFE, V shaped sixes, 4.0 I1GRFE, and diesels of the 1KD series, most often 1KD FTE, with a capacity of 163 173 horsepower. Less common are 1KZ diesel engines and gasoline engines of older series, mainly on cars from Asia and designers. All engines we must pay tribute are distinguished by enviable resource and viability. Subject to at least approximate compliance with the technical regulations, Toyota is capable of running hundreds of thousands of kilometers. The inline 4 2.7, despite its solid working volume, is perhaps the lowest resource engine. In addition, it also has several unpleasant congenital traits, a tendency to leaks in the front oil seal and very successful pipes of the cooling system. Yes, and on a two-ton machine, the wear of the piston group turns to be quite large. Already by a run of 200 to 150 thousand kilometers, it is often necessary to replace the piston rings, and the valve clearance should be monitored constantly. The rest of the engine is surprisingly simple, logical, and well designed. If the resource of the chain was still higher than the typical 120 150 thousand kilometers, it could still be among the leaders. The price of an average repair is relatively low, and boring is rarely required, and the quality of the cylinder block is very high. Unfortunately, it is often groomed by driving with butter oil, repeatedly overheated and barbarously operated on 97-92nd gasoline with or, or with LPG. In such cases, the cylinder head is simply dead, with cracked valve seats and a large annual, annular production. The more solid 4.0 literary V6 was officially on sale with us, and this is a really good choice for the car. A resource for 300,000 for 1GR FE is quite typical, and then everything is limited by the condition of the attachments and the age of the power and cooling system. With good care, a mileage of half a million kilometers is quite achievable. Problems? Leaks, unsuccessful crankies ventilation system, throttle contamination and attachment failures, low resource of lambda probes. On the earliest engines, there was also a breakdown of the cylinder head gasket with the loss of antifreeze, but now the probability of meeting a car with an unresolved problem is small. But with the cons consequences of overheating, it is very possible. If you change the oil often, pour good oil, do not overheat, adjust the well clearance in time, then the engine will show it perfectly. Diesel engines 3.0 were also sold officially and are also very good, though not for the provinces, but only for cities with good fuel quality. 1KD FTE really doesn't like sulfurous diesel fuel, low sulfur without the lubrication, with water and frozen. If the fuel is not very good, then the resource of the cylinder head injectors and the fuel pump will be too small to recoup the increased purchase costs. 
The EGR is also extremely capricious here. On average, injectors are enough for 120-150 thousand kilometers and best for 200-250. All other components require frequent checks. The most powerful versions of the 173 horsepower engine, it also distinguished itself by cracks in the pistons and a small resource of the turbine. This already looks like an outright overkill for forcing and manufacturer's miscalculation. Fortunately, there were very few such cars, these are only European copies from 2007. But it is worth showing video, especially since if the nozzle pours, then cracks appear on motor with less forcing. To begin with, the compar compression in the cylinder goes away a little. At this moment, you can notice the problem in time and fix it, until you need to bore and replace the entire piston group. In general, the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado 120 is a really reliable car. It is very resourceful and at the same time its design is surprisingly logical and simple. Spare parts do not bear extra chargers for the second repair, as is customary with European brands. No double superchargers for repair sizes and repair kits and consumables are also cheap. On this information about the problems of the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado 120 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.